Hi guys, um, I promised you a product shoot tutorial and here it is. This is what you're going to get this photo shoot. I'm going to show you step by step exactly how I captured this shot. Um, what I'm really happy about with this shot is that I've captured it all in camera. The image that you see on screen is the photoshopped layer. Here is the unretouched layer. Did you see the difference? You're going to notice a little bit of difference on the lipstick, a couple of reflections that I had to remove, the body shot logo, and the shape of that water there. Not a single bit of retouching on that shot that you're seeing there. And I'm going to show you exactly step by step how I shot that, all the lighting and everything. Before I do that, we want to make sure that you get notified about great uh, tutorials like this that we'll have coming up. So please click that little bell symbol to say to YouTube that you want um, notifications. And also, if you enjoy this tutorial, please click the like button at the end. It helps us out as well. Well, uh, that's it. Let's get on with uh, this tutorial. Stay tuned to the very end of this episode to find out which one of you got to name her. Okay, so let me talk you through the setup so far. I have my camera on a mono stand and then I've got a low block table with black gloss acrylic and then above I've got my diffusion material on a scrim frame uh, one that I just make myself and that's supported by two C stands that's holding that up and you can see I've just got one uh, bronze color uni light above at the moment through my diffusion material so that's giving me the glow in my perspex or will give me a perfectly cylindrical glow. The difficulty with this is my planning and arrangement of the layout because what I want to do is I also want to put um, some pools of water on there as well with the products. With the pools of water I have to consider exactly where I'm going to put those and what they're going to look like. So I start with one light from above I'm going to tether my camera in now and I'm just going to assess the results on the gloss black perspex. I'm not even worried really at this stage about what the products look like. I'll deal with those as I go along. So my very first test shot, you can see the light was very overexposed. So I simply uh, go over to the pack and then uh, just simply turn the power down. It was on power eight so I've dropped that down uh, to power five so you can see the very overexposed result and then uh, dropped it down a little bit <clears throat> dropped it down further until eventually I end up with a the ball of light kind of how I want it where I am now I feel I've got a sort of level of intimacy with the product and the emotion if you like of the composition feels better to me so this is going to going to be my starting point now on the composition the uh, lighting on the products still needs to be taken care of to get a light in this side of this one i needed to get a light over there and my scrim c stands were on the other side before so i've swapped the whole scrim and spun it around so that I don't have any legs in the way at that end, then that allowed me to put another scrim roll over here. That light there, which is just behind my scrim roll, this diffusion material that you can buy from our website, by the way, that light is doing that, okay? So that's that light there that's shining into the back of that capsule. But you see now I've also introduced this light in here. To make that work, I use, where is it? This one here, which is a Pico light that has a projection attachment on it. 
and it has a projecting lens on it that allows you to focus the light but also more importantly it has these aperture blades that you can move in and out to control the light into a very precise space and if I move the aperture blades you can see how some light will hit this object in the foreground and if I move the side one you see how I can block and shield the light coming in there so I can control the light. You'll also notice that I've put a piece of white card inside that uh, blusher capsule just to bounce a little bit more light down. It's not doing a tremendous job but it's just filling in a little bit of that shadow, that crescent shadow there. So it's all a step-by-step -step methodical process of figuring out what's what, where's what, what worked, what you like. So I'm trying to do as much as I can in camera, which is what I always do. Good product photography shouldn't be about lots and lots of Photoshop work. You should try and do as much as you can in camera, which is what I'm doing now. So I'll continue on. Okay, so I've added a uh, second Pico light. So there's the first one that's illuminating the color inside that thing. Here's the second Pico light. So I put that white card inside and now this Pico light, if I turn it on and off, there, a very fine beam that's only hitting the inside of that white card to bounce some light down into the surface here because this was completely black. Now that's added that subtle bit of light that you can see in there which is really nice which I'm really liking. Look, this is the raw files. These are the raw files. This is the raw software, straight out of camera, no Photoshop work yet, no editing. I've got four lights set up at the moment. Two Pico lights, a uni light from above, and a light from the scrim behind. Look at the control in here. The light on the edge here, the light in here, the light on the um, makeup, Okay, no Photoshop work yet. Next task is to illuminate the edge of this brush. But let me talk through what I've added into the mix now. So we've got the two Pico lights that I showed you before, which are isolating the blusher and, and the white card that I put inside the blusher. I then added this third Pico light, which is isolating just the nib of the lipstick from that direction so only highlighting the lipstick and you can see I've added another scrim roll and you can see that graduated glow coming up from it and that is with this Pico box at an angle to feather some light up here coming out on this side which is giving me illumination in this side of the lipstick and the brush and if we have a look on screen there you can see so that illumination there and on the inside of the brush wasn't there before if I go back that's what it was you see so it was much darker on that side and now I've added some illumination in there now everything that you see there on screen at the moment that's all been done that's straight out of camera that's the raw file now it's not perfect I'm not saying that you shouldn't use Photoshop to finish things off there's probably going to be a couple of things that I want to finish off. There's one funny little reflection that I can't do anything about with the lipstick at that angle. Um, that's going to have to require a little blip. But what I'm getting at here is the closer you get the shot to perfection in camera, then the more it, it looks real because it is real. It, you know, a lot of photoshopped images look over photoshopped, over manipulated. You can see the photoshop work. You know it's not real. So I want to get this image to looking like a quality image without Photoshop and then if necessary some minor little imperfections can be brushed up. So uh, that's the lighting setup uh, so far. Let me just run through this Pico box here. That's on power 5.6. That one is at 6.7. That goes to that one which is highlighting the color of the blusher. That one is at 5.2. And the one hitting the white card inside, you can see is right up at 8.5 because I'm trying to bounce as much light off of that white card. Then over here, I've got my 
uh, light from the side here, which is light number one, which is at just at 2.7. That's the one that is creating that little catch light on the edge of that when we look at it from the other side. So that's why it's at such a low power. And then the other one is at 4.8. That's the one coming over from the top. We get so many people that say, oh, what's the ratio of the light to the other one? And what's that ratio? Well, that's just such a nonsense question when you're dealing with precise lighting, because if you knew the ratio and I told you the ratio, just like I have, what you also need to know for the physics of it is the distance of the light from the subject. Because without the distance, then knowing that ratio is absolutely pointless. So unless you know the distance, the type of light, the joules, etc., of the light, um, it's absolutely pointless. So how do I decide the ratio? How do I decide it? Well, it's very simple. I do it in this step-by-step -step process of looking at the light looking at the light and saying, right, that one's too bright, so I'm going to take it down. That one's too hot, so I'm going to take it down. This one's not bright enough, so I'm going to take it up. I just do it by looking at it and visually assessing. I don't use a light meter. I don't measure the light, but there's no point measuring the light. I've got a big tethered screen coming out of my Hasselblad here. There's no need to measure the light. This is my light measurement, and these are the analytics on that light measurement making those decisions you have to look at the picture and decide what's good right i think this is as far as i can go without photoshop uh if you look closely i've added a little bit of blip of light on there and that was from holding a reflector out here and i've increased the power of the light on here not happy with that reflection there but i can't do anything about it because it's coming from this so the only way I could do it is to take that away and then shoot it but I don't want to do that for this shot um, I want to do as much as I can uh, as I said just in one shot so it's all one shot and we'll add the water in a minute but what I want to do is take a picture for you with each only each individual light so that you can see what that light's doing on its own um, that's to hold my reflector after what that's doing what that's doing uh, what that one's doing. So I've got four Pico lights there now. Oh, that's the other thing I didn't show you. I've added that Pico light in there, which is actually just highlighting the nib of the brush only. Let me show you what it's like without that there. So you can see the nib of the brush, it was basically black. Then I added the uh, Pico box at the front. But then you can see I can now, I've now illuminated just the nib of the brush to add a little bit of color. And that's been done with a really fine, precise control from this Pico light with the projection attachment shining right down just onto the nib of the brush. What I want to do now is I want to actually take a picture with just one light, each light on no other lights on and then the next one on and no other lights on so you can see exactly which lights are doing what and then i can talk you through it we've just left the top light only on now i'm going to take a picture so there you go that is just the top light on its own you can see that there's no other illumination in anything else. It's just the glow in the perspex. Right, now just do the side scrim on that pack, please, Ben. So this is just the light on here now. So this is just this one light on its own. There you go. So that's that light is illuminating just that. Okay, this one is the light that's shining into the white card inside the blusher that I put inside there to bounce this light down in here. And you can see that's also illuminating the color and a bit of the Chanel logo. That's just the nib of the lipstick being illuminated. And that's illuminating the side of the brush, the side of the lipstick. That's illuminating just the nib of that brush. Okay, so that's all the individual lights showing what, what each of them are doing. We can now put all the lights back on to their original power settings um, so that we've got the global illumination. 
now we have got all the lights back on we capture the shot and hopefully we should be back to where we were and we are good now admittedly yes this is looking like quite an expensive setup because i've got three scoro packs i've got five pico lights and two uni lights in action but sometimes for certain types of photography you do need the right equipment there are ways of doing this cheaper with snoots and very tight grids and um, you know sort of fixes but it's the level of control that i want which is why i use this equipment and this demonstration is primarily just to show you the type of work uh, that i do but it also gives you an insight into how i would like something like this now i'm going to add the water in Take that shot. Take, oh, that one's got a funny shape. Still not quite the right shape though. Round shape, because that looks a bit funny. So here's the unretouched image and here's the retouched image. Unretouched and retouched. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and that step-by-step -step walkthrough on my lighting. I know um, that many of you are gonna comment on the fact that I was using tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment to achieve that photo shoot. And you know what? You're absolutely right. I was, but it's my job. Those are the tools that help me do my job more effectively. So those are the tools that I choose to use, as do many other professional photographers. Back in the day, I used to use um, a lot of homemade tools, snoots, my own grids and devices to create small pockets of light and control light in uh, a small way. But obviously with these tools, it helps me do it more efficiently. Maybe I can make a video if you're interested. If you want to comment below, I can make a video in the future about how I can make some homemade tools and that you can do yourself to create little pockets of light. Um, but yeah, leave some comments on that. Um, sorry the video was a little bit shaky because I was holding this camera that I've got now by hand as I was working, so it was a little bit shaky. And sorry the white balance kept shifting a little bit as well because it was shifting between the screen balance and then the tungsten lights, the modeling lamps on the studio lights. But anyway, I think, um, the video hopefully will inspire you, give you some ideas for uh, product photography. If you like the video, please, please click the like button because that helps us a lot. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please click the subscribe button. If you are a subscriber, then remember to click that little bell symbol to get notified on future videos. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Learn photography with me, Carl Taylor, at carltaylorphotography.com with instant access, online streaming, and HD downloads. Everything you need to know from beginner to pro. Subscribe to our channel, get 10% off Squarespace. Stephanie, Stephanie, we're ready for you. <sighs> the show must go on.